I'm backing up my truck, I'm gonna hook it up, loading up my boat with all my gear. I've been working hard all week, trying to make ends meet, spending time wishing I was fishing. Well, Terry Wickstrom wants to take you fishing. Gather up your gear and come along. Well, Terry Wickstrom wants to take you fishing. This is Terry Wickstrom. Join Karen Collum, Greg Collagio, and me as we take you to some of our favorite fishing spots from Colorado to Minnesota, the Arctic Circle to Central America and beyond. As we revisit episodes of Mountain States Fishing and Angling Adventures Television on the best of fishing with Terry Wickstrom. Hey, I'm getting ready for walleye season, going through my tackle. There's so many ways you can catch walleyes. If I could only fish for walleyes one way, it'd be with this. An ordinary lead head jig with a Berkeley power grub on it or a piece of night crawler or a minnow. It's just my favorite way to fish. I love jigging and sometimes I sacrifice catching a few less fish just to fish with jigs because I love to fish and it's a great way to fish for walleyes. In tournaments, the most successful method of catching walleyes has been trolling with crankbaits like this shad wrap. More tournaments are won trolling with crankbaits than probably all other ways put together. But for the average recreational angler and for the avid walleye fishermen in the western United States, more walleyes are caught using bottom bouncers than probably any other type of presentation. Seems kind of funny. All it is is a piece of wire with a weight in the middle. That's one, one kind where it's got the dual wire. Here's another one that slides up and down. You see these in stores all over. If you use bottom bouncers to cover water and fish for walleyes in the western United States, you'll catch more walleyes probably than any other way that you'll try and maybe always put together. Tell you what we're going to do. We're going to take you out on Pueblo Reservoir in Colorado, teach you a little bit about how to use bottom bouncers, then we'll bring you back and talk a little more about them. So join us on the water at Pueblo. What I'd like to show you now is trolling with a bottom bouncer. That's a bottom bouncer is uh, it's a wire with a weight on it and you'll see the typical ones you'll see will be l-shaped they'll actually have two wires on and they'll uh, have one wire coming out this is a slip type one but when i want you to use the bottom bouncer bottom bouncers probably account for more walleyes than all other presentations put together in western uh, western reservoirs what we have attached to that is about a three foot leader with a spinner on it and there's varieties of these spinner blades and a two hook harness now what we're going to do so we're going to take a night crawler that I have here. And when you hook the night crawler on, you put just the tip of the night crawler on the first hook, just that little bit like that. Then you go down and you take the second hook and you don't stretch it out all the way and hook it in. You leave a loop in there. And the reason for that is when that worm gets in the water, it's going to stretch out. And if you don't leave a loop, it'll form a, the worm will be kinked up and it'll spin in the water. And when you're fishing these, right now we're fishing it from the back of the boat using our gas motor. And we'll put the boat in gear and the first thing you do is get a speed where you see the spinner is turning properly. And when you know that's turning properly and you're getting good action on your spinner, then you let the rig down to bottom. And when it gets down to bottom, you lift it up about six inches. and then you'll be moving along a little bit. You'll see we're using the gas motor today, a little gas motor. When I want to cover territory a little faster and I want a little bit more power to control the boat on windy days, I'll use the gas motor. At time, other times you'll see me using the front motor to control the boat, the electric when I'm using bottom bouncers. And when I do that, I'm usually going a little slower and I'm following a real tight depth contour because it's easier for me to use the electric motor to pull around. But I like to, it's more comfortable and on long trolling passes to sit in the back of the boat. Now we've gone a little ways and that's actually come up off bottom. So what we want to do now is we want to let out more line until we get that back down because as the boat goes that tends to plane out behind us. So what we're trying to do is keep that down on the bottom. A good idea is to look at your line and your line should always be out about 45 degrees. If that line is way out more than 45 degrees then 
you're probably not uh, close to bottom and you're just dragging through the water column and you don't know where. If that line is down at about too straight down, you probably aren't getting your spinner to work well enough. So try to keep your line at about 45 degrees. A couple things when you're trolling with bottom bouncers that are good tips for you to remember. One is the rod you use. When I'm trolling with bottom bouncers, I don't use a big expensive graphite rod. I use more of a, either a composite graphite fiberglass or a fiberglass rod. And I use one typically that's seven feet long or more. And the reason I do that, first of all, is you can see when I pull how limber that tip of the rod is, you see how it moves? And I, I do that on purpose uh, because when a fish grabs that spinner on the end of a bottom bouncer, he will take that and he'll turn and it will load the rod up. And if that rod doesn't give, you'll actually pull those hooks out of his mouth before they get, he turns and you'll just pull the hooks away and you won't get a hook set. So you don't set the hook like this when you get a fish on a bottom bouncer. You just keep moving, let the rod tighten up and then you start reeling, maybe pull back a little bit to make sure you've got tight line. The other thing is the line I'm using. I have Berkeley's fire line on here down to the bottom bouncer. And I do that on purpose. I like that no stretch line because when I lower my weight down to bottom, I can feel the bottom and I'll actually feel if I've got rocks or sand or mud or brush, it really transmits what's going on down there to me. So I have a much better feel. And then when the rod does bend and load up, I eventually do get a better hook set with that no stretch line. So those are a couple tips when you're fishing with bottom monsters that can really make it more effective and help you catch more fish. Remember what I told you about keeping your line at 45 degrees? Another thing is now, see when I drop the rod back, my line goes slack as I touch bottom. Now I pick it up a few inches, so I try to keep my lure running about six inches or so off the of bottom, or my weight rather, and that keeps the lure up just a little bit off bottom. So what I do is I continually drop back to make sure I can touch the bottom, and I watch my depth finder. If we get deeper, I let out more line. If we get shallower, I take some in, trying to maintain that 45 degree angle and my weight running just above the bottom. Now some fishermen actually like to drag bottom with their bottom bouncers and sometimes it's an effective way. It'll kick up mud and debris and attract fish, but you tend to get snagged a lot and I, I don't know that it necessarily catches more fish. Some really believe in that. I like to run mine above bottom and keep, let the spinner do the attracting and I don't get hung up as much that and I still catch an awful lot of fish. And, and by the way, bottom bouncers are good not only for walleyes, but trout, bass, virtually everything that swims will hit a bottom bouncer rig with a spinner and a live bait behind it. So give them a try. And you can run crankbaits too. A lot of guys run bottom bouncers with rapalas behind them. So you should make them part of your arsenal. And there's a fish. There we go. I don't think it's real big. See what we got? Can't tell what it is yet though. It's a little walleye. All right. There you go. All right, not a very big one, but a good example of why we troll with bottom monsters and how effective they can be. We'll get this guy back in the water. Hope you got a good feel from that segment on how to fish with bottom bouncers. And you know, I very seldom use light bottom bouncers. I've got some in here like this one, but typically I use a heavier bottom bouncer, ounce and a half to two ounces, because I like to keep the weight close to vertical or just behind the boat at 45 degrees. But occasionally I'll go to three, three and a half, four ounce bouncers, but three ounce even, especially deep water when I want to cover water. In fact, Steve Mullen and I did just that on Meredith Lake in the Panhandle of Texas. Why don't we take you out there, show you how to use long rods, heavy bottom bouncers, Meredith Lake, Texas, catching walleyes. What we're going to do here is, um, we didn't pick up as many fish jigging as we'd like to, so we're going to try to find some more fish by running bottom bouncers. We've got some transitions from sand. If you look over here, you can see the sand and the rocky shore, and there's a flat kind of that comes out. We've marked some fish in about 25 feet of water, so we're going to run bottom bouncers with uh, nightcrawler harnesses and spinner blades and see if we can locate some fish and hopefully pick up a few bigger fish. There we go. Good one. Feels okay. I don't think it's real big. Okay. No, it's a little one. I can get it. All right. There. Oh, no, that's pretty nice that's fish. Oh, that's not bad. Pretty nice fish. He got it down nice and deep. Can I help you out there? I can get it. Go ahead and keep fishing. I'll try to keep us going here. See if we can't get another one. Boy, it was a subtle, subtle bite. Nice, 
Lake Meredith walleye. Well, I was going to let him go anyway, so that's good. I got one plan. I think. There we go. Yeah. Right off that point again. Same spot we go through. Yeah, same spot. Boy, this I'm marking some nicer fish down there too. I think I need net on that one, Terry. Oh yeah, why don't you net this one? I don't think it's real big, but I want to keep the boat going here. There, we, there we go. All right. Um, he's on the the back hook again. We're gonna try to go specifically after some bigger fish. We've caught a lot of fish today. We're gonna take heavy bottom bouncers and fish some real deep structure with uh, crawler harnesses and spinner blades and see if we can't find maybe just a little bit bigger fish than the ones we've been catching today. Should we get at it, Steve? Let's go for it. All right. You know, Steve, when you're running bottom bouncers, you use really long rods. There's some real reasons for that, isn't there? Well, uh, I found that uh, the, uh, these are eight and a half foot steelhead rods, and this particular uh, blank right here is a, is a heavy uh, action rod. And I find uh, that I have good success running bottom bouncers and especially heavy bottom bouncers, uh, where I can get the bouncer and the bait out away from the boat a little bit, and this is a very easy way to do that. And plus, this is actually a system, a bottom bouncer system, where I'm running 14-pound test line on these reels here, and I tie my own blades and the leaders on, on the uh, worm harnesses. I have those uh, tied with 12-pound test line, and so each time I snag or whatever, I don't lose my bottom bouncer, and I find that the uh, that the uh, long rods actually load up with these uh, three three ounce bottom bouncers, and you can see I've got some bend in the rod here a little bit, and that uh, that bait down there is is following along with uh, tension on this rod, and it's almost an automatic hookup system, and so uh, you really don't have to worry too much about hook sets if you have a fish hit this worm harness uh, running behind this long rod where you've got tension on the rod already built in with the bottom bouncer, uh, it's going to be an automatic hookup. So it works real well for uh, running deep water. You can run fast running these big bouncers, run large blades, and uh, like I say, there's the, uh, the hook set is, is all automatic. So With this many lines out, we have to keep the boat moving. So. back corner chair. Okay. All right. That's what we're after. All right. You bet. Not the monster we're looking for, but a good solid fish. Hope by now you're convinced about the effectiveness of this piece of wire with a weight on it called a bottom bouncer. You know, all we do is go out, we pull something like these Northland uh, crawler harnesses behind it. We showed you in the show how to rig that. Now we're going to take you out to Boysen Reservoir in Wyoming and finish up the show just showing you how effective and how much fun walleye fishing can be with bottom bouncers, Boysen Reservoir, Wyoming. First fish, Terry. I'm going to contribute to my... Uh... Oh, yeah. I think I can get them without the net, tell you the truth. Oh! Oh, fat yeah. walleye. All right. <laughs> oh, first fish, huh? First fish. And he didn't want to do that first fish thing, you know? I feel like a... Got him. Oh, good job. Got him. Good job. Let me grab the net. I'm going to be a good net boy I told today. The... Bring a guy up to your favorite fishing hole and he catches all the fish. Oh, oh, oh. There we go. Well, all right. All right, another one, Terry. Well, that's a nice, that's a nice fish. Yeah, another 17 and a half, 18 inch fish. And you know, we had some fish there, Terry. I'm gonna throw another a nice. finder there. I wanna look at, I want you to show you something. Where's that hooked? Right where it's supposed to be, right? No, it's on the back hook. The back hook. You know what that tells me? They come up behind, they're just barely sucking it in. Because if they're really chasing it aggressively and pounding it, you get them on the front hook. When they're hitting that back hook, that's why we're missing so many fish. They're coming by and you're just sucking it in. And you got that one good. I changed it to a hook rig too, and I'm doing better. That's a nice, nice, nice fish, fat yeah. walleye. I mean, it's not that long, but it's just a huge, healthy, fat fish. Just beautiful. You know what? If you live in the Mountain States area, 
and you want to experience some great walleye fishing, get a lot of nice walleyes to eat, and the chance at a 10 pound plus fish, you've got to come up and experience Boysen Reservoir. It's a great area to fish, it's wonderful. And Eric, what time should they be up here? Uh, third week in June to about the 10th of July. If it's an early year, uh, middle of June to the, about the 10th day of July. Here's one going. Right by the buoy again? Yep. Yeah, yeah got it. Yeah. Right got by it. the buoy. I guess we did throw the buoy in the right place. That yeah. looks like a better fish, Terry. It feels decent. I, don't think, I think it's about the same. <laughs> it's feistier, but I think it's a little smaller, actually. Yeah, you can. I can flip that one. You can flip. flip. I think we'll just let this one go. We've got yeah, plenty of Yeah, that one's. But I'll tell you what, he actually fought better than some of the bigger ones. Still a nice fish. If you were up here just fishing for a few walleyes to take home, that'd be a great eating size walleye. Now we've got it's a few bigger than that. and a half or so. Yeah, nice so, and plump too. Oh, a nice healthy fish. We're going to let that one go. Let him grow up. I don't Let's think get... this one's as big. Oh, yeah. it's a little one. Is it? Well, you it, could. It's a yeah, little yeah, bitty one. A cigar. This, I think this one, you know what, Eric? What's that? We switched sides of the boat and I caught your fish. <laughs> Well, I thought you. This did. one was looking for you. Eric is on that side now. I'm sorry. See, the big fish were looking for me. Yeah. We'll let this one grow up and be a little bigger. But uh, the action is pretty steady, isn't it? Uh huh. Let me show you what we're catching these fish on. Using a bottom bouncer, which is just a weight with a wire on it to keep it off bottom. I'll show you how I present that in just a minute. And you've seen us using those numbers of times before. And on the end of that, I've got a, just a night crawler harness, and this is a two hook harness. And all we're doing is we're slowly moving along, maybe half to three quarters of a mile an hour, getting that spinner going. We're not moving right now, but we'll let that down to bottom. And when that's on bottom, I'll pick it up and I'll let the line go back about 45 degrees behind. I'll let out another little bit of line until I touch bottom again, and then I'll lift it up and hold it just off of bottom as I run with my electric motor. And every so often I'll touch it back down to bottom and watch my electronics to make sure I'm staying close to bottom but I don't drag it right across the bottom then I don't hang up as much. And the other thing I like to do is when I'm dropping it down like that is that makes that that blade stop and flutter and start and gives it a real erratic action. Sometimes that'll trigger a strike. There we go. We would have had a double there, huh Terry? That was definitely a walleye I missed. And look, you did it again to me. Want to net this for me, sir? I'll show you what they look like. Yeah, all Close. right. You know, it's like win-win, you know? Um, so you can't lose when you're the TV host. Everybody expects you to catch fish. And you just did, see? And you do that all the time. Your guests probably never outfish you, do they? Um, never. Not once it gets to edit, they don't. So he, took, he took this deep. I'm going to have to get a pair of pliers to get him out of there. Get him out of there. Tell you what, these are nice, fat, Good eating size walleyes. Oh, I thought you were talking about me for a second there. Um, Good fat. We're going to keep some of these too. I may. Uh... Yeah, selectively harvest. Now, selectively harvest doesn't mean that you select everything you harvest. It just simply means you choose the ones. Well, we that's can. That's a perfect eater. We can probably keep the ones I catch since you're not catching any. <laughs> and we probably won't be taking too many fish. If you're really looking for a little different fishing experience, I mean, Go out and fish in Colorado or wherever you live by your home and enjoy the fishing. But take some time to plan some trips to places like Boysen Reservoir and Seminole Reservoir and some of these Wyoming and Montana places. Because the, the experience is really worth it. It's just a wonderful way to spend some time and you can catch some awfully nice fish and have a good time. So get, speaking of yeah, that, I got one going oh, here. Cool. Let's see if I can get him. Will I? Yep. Oh, yeah. oh, oh I good him. job, oh, Terry. Oh, this feels like a better fish. Oh, yeah. You doubled her over. That one was 12 feet, Terry. Remember that? This is a that? better fish, I think. In your computerized mind. Uh, oh, yeah. Here we go again. There we go. Here, I was teaching you about my Scotty spinner. The there we go. Spinner, and and you've right. been using this Northland spinner and just tearing them up. Oh, that's that's a about nice. a 17-inch fish. Another, another little fat oh, man. walleye. I tell you what, that one. That nailed it, huh? Oh, solid, solid. Well, look at the weight these fish have. The thing about pulling spinners and rigs like this is there's not a huge difference in terms of advantages other than your presentation may vary a little bit. <clears throat> it's amazing how shallow you can fish with bottom bouncers close to the boat at 30 to 45 degrees. Oh, yeah. My preferred way to fish is, of course, jigs, but I, I like to fish whatever it takes, whatever it takes to catch Well, yeah, fish. My, my favorite way to fish is jigging, too. But, you know, when the walleye spread out on these flats and things, if they're not concentrated, you, you spend a lot of time with a jig and not catch a lot, catch a lot of fish.
Well, our here. water temperature is 66, Terry, and these fish are dispersed in the early summer pattern, and they're just looking for bait fish. Right, and if they're spread out, you cover a lot of water. Now, if you find a concentration where you keep the same spot hitting fish, then you may want to stop and jig them or something. You talked about bottom bouncers, you know, not having an edge trolling like this sometimes. You know, what you're presenting can be a little different, and maybe your ability to set the hook or something can make a difference. But I had my son out one time. He loves to troll, and I love to jig. So he wanted us to go trolling at a lake in Colorado for walleyes. And I didn't want him to catch any fish. <laughs> Your son? Yeah, because I didn't want because So, I, so I, I took the ugliest, stupidest lime green blade I had in my box that I never caught a fish on in my life and put it on his uh, night crawler harness. And after about 45 minutes, he was ahead of me five to nothing. And you think I could find another one of those blades anywhere? <laughs> And he wouldn't give it back he either. Sell it back no, because huh? he knew what I did, and he wouldn't give that blade back either. You know, I think today's show probably convinced you if you're going to walleye fish in the West, you probably need to add bottom bouncers to your repertoire. Whether you use the sliding style like this or the regular standard L-shaped bottom bouncer that you find all over, tie your own spinners or buy some on crawler harnesses like these from Northland Tackle. It doesn't take much to get you going. Little Berkeley fire line, a good rod. Get out, pull some bottom bouncers for walleyes across the structure in the western United States in our reservoirs. You'll catch walleyes, you'll have a lot of fun. Join us next week on Mountain States Fishing. <laughs>